I need to, amen, get, make me a plumb to the next club, amen. Come on, somebody. Why am I wasting my time? I'm just being here. Amen. I need, I need, amen. I need to cash this in. But how many, how many of you know God is not man that he should lie? Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now, he would say, the Lord host, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, for there shall not be room enough to receive it. So he promises here two things. The first thing is that he's going to open the windows of heaven. Windows represent access or portals. When, when the windows are open above my life, I have clarity of vision. The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. So I gotta have I gotta have vision in my life. God is gonna open the eyes of my understanding, and now I'll be able to see the next step or the next move that I need to take. But if I'm walking around with closed windows, amen, I can have all the talent in the world. I can have all the wisdom in the world. I will not know what to do with it. I need the windows open above my life. Come on, somebody. And then the Bible says he will pour me out a blessing. Now, blessings are often described as opportunity, and opportunity is often described as hard work. Now, that's, that, that disqualified a whole lot of them right there. You talking about some hard work? Oh, you ain't talking about me, praise the Lord. But your next promotion is, is because your next promotion is just beyond your comfort zone. And it's going to require some effort on your part, praise God, to get to the next level. Come on, you got to be willing to move out your own way. You got to be willing to stretch, praise God. You're going to have to be willing to dig deep. The Bible says he, he put that we are treasures in earthen vessel. Yeah, amen. A king, look now, God place, doesn't place things on the surface for kings. God puts things just underneath the surface because he doesn't want to make you, give you a welfare mentality. He wants to give you a kingdom mentality. Which means I'm going to have to dig for what I want. I'm going to have to stretch for what I want, praise God. But when I'm tired of praise God, God promised to open the eyes of my understanding. He promised to give me so much opportunity that I will not be able to take a break of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Personally, praise God. Now, check this out. Check this out. Amen. I'm, uh, listen, I'm going to Stanford University. Don't sound easy, dude. Don't, that's, don't sound easy to me. Amen. But that's the opportunity that God has opened up for me. And I understand I'm going to have to press my way. I understand I'm going to have to stay up late to get it. I understand, amen, I'm going to have to learn stuff that I don't know. But, but this word of God is true. The word of God is true. He says, and I will, listen, verse 10, verse, verse 10 says, bring you all the tithes of the storehouse. He said that there may be meat in my house. Who me now who has said, the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11 says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. What is a devourer, pastor? I'm glad you asked. The devourer is an unseen force that eat up your resources. Amen. The Bible says you put money in bags with holes in it. That's the devourer. Come on. You expect much, but you receive little. That's the devourer. Come on, somebody. You stacking it up and thinking that, amen, you're going to have plenty when you get ready for it. But God said, I didn't blow on it. <laughs> Why? Because he ain't going to let you rob him and then enjoy what you have stolen, praise God. He says, and I will be the devour for your sake. He said, he'll stop all that. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast the fruit before the time of the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And the Bible says in verse 12, all nations shall call you what? Blessed. Benefited, well off, and successful. For you shall be a good to look at, or a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. You're going to be good to look at. You ain't got to pop your own collar. Amen. Your friends going to be popping it for you. Amen. Come on. God want to show off in his people, but he can't do it with disobedient folk. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Get your ties and off and ready. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you again for the opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. It is my right and my privilege to be a tither and an offering giver. God, I expect now for you to open unto me the windows of heaven. I expect to have more vision and insight than any of my peers.
I expect to have so much opportunity, God, that I have to call my friends to take advantage of some of this opportunity. Father, I believe the word of God, and it is manifested in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, I place you in the hand of our ushers. Glory to God. Opportunity, opportunity. Now, my, my, my business is paying for, amen, happily in the education, but I can't leave that money on the table because God has provided opportunity. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. And so it is with some of you. Some of you have educational benefits, but you never, you can't even see yourself in school. Who told you that when you got grown, it's time to stop learning? Come on, the devil is lying to somebody. All right. In the van, amen. Start with over here. We know Brother Fred, but go ahead. <laughs> Little Fred. Little Fred. Little Fred. Little Fred. And on the bass, Curly. <laughs> no, that's my bass player right there. Praise the Lord. That's my lead player. That's my bass player. Right here, that's Brother. Brother. Brother Gary. Brother Gary. Go ahead. This is, not, this is none other than the Randall Anderson. Oh, yeah. I've been living since he was 13. He's never took the money What's your real name, bro? I'm going to stop on y'all. I'll call you whatever you want. Anathi Shabazz. All right, that's my brother Anathi. Amen. 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 You want to hear the choir? They will be celestial. Praise God. Come on, y'all. Rock the house. Amen. Let God use you. Hallelujah.
Y'all hear what we saying? All right. Does everybody hear what we saying? Oh, my God. 
stuff you let bowl you over. Come on, I am what my father. Yeah, I may have done what they said I've done. I ain't perfect. I was there. That was my love shot. But that don't dictate me. I refuse to be limited by my last mistake. I refuse to be held down by my last mistake. Do you hear what I'm saying? That does not determine my destiny. My, de my destiny is mapped out by God. God determines who I am. God is obligated to show you those things that are critical to your success or he cannot hold you accountable. God is obligated to show you those things that are detrimental to your success or else he cannot hold you accountable. Between him showing me what's critical and showing me what's, what's detrimental, that's, that I have a path to follow, praise God. That's, that leads to my destiny. Here's what I want to ask you. Is your servant working for you? Amen. Amen. It's supposed to be you on time a little too fast. Is your servant working for you? Is your expectation working for you? Are you actively expecting things to come to pass right now? Or have you, do you put your dreams on a shelf? Come on now, 2012. What are you expecting in your life to happen right now? Financially, professionally, economically, physically, mentally, relationally, what are you expecting right now? If your servant is not working for you, your servant is asleep. Come on, send that, get that servant to work, praise God. It's kicking loose, turn it on, praise God. What are you expecting? Amen. That's why, listen now, that's why I try to stay in the best hotel that I can, I can afford. Not because I'm trying to show off to somebody. You wouldn't know where I stayed if I didn't tell you. But I'm sleeping in that 603 count sheet because I expect to sleep, I expect to have something at home, praise God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. I, 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 I go test drive cars from time to time because that's what I expect. I got to release my faith. Amen. I'm constantly looking at what different jobs pay because I'm expecting some things. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Where you work right now, what's the next level? What is the next level and what does it pay? And what have you said to yourself? I, I, well, that's not for me. Who is it for? <laughs> you think God put all that stuff up there for other folk? Come on, I'm looking at the pay, pay scale right now, praise God. I'm going up, amen. Because that's my expectation. You hear what I'm saying? Amen, am I talking over your head or me? Come on, expectation, education. Amen, I don't care if you 55, 60. What you gonna do for the next 30 years if you here? We say, Pastor, it takes four years to get a degree. How old are you going to be if you don't get one? <laughs> Same age. Might as well make more money on the process. Come on, somebody. Do we let the devil steal our egg? Let your servant go. I want my, my servant going. When I die, he's going to be tired. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> that joke is going to be woke out. There's degrees of faith. Hey, Amen. When you have no faith, when you are in fear, you are faithless. I'm, I'm scared. You never hear me say I'm scared. I might be shaking in my boots, but you won't hear it come out of my mouth. You hear what I'm saying? Next, erase that from your vocabulary. I'm scared, Pastor. Scared of what? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm scared. Amen. I used to dodge a whole bunch of stuff because I was scared. I stopped now. Mm -mm. Yeah. I'm getting a revelation, praise God. Amen. Little faith. When you sit up and worry, summer coming, then you got to buy school clothes. I'm just worried. I don't know how I'm going to get these school clothes my chair. You, are in, you have little faith. Little faith. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean you have no faith. We say, see, the devil tricks us and makes us think that worrying is doing something. Yeah. You ain't doing nothing. God don't honor worry. 
He only honors faith. That's the only thing that gets his attention. Hey, man, come on, just take these notes down. I'm not going to go through all these scriptures, amen. Just take the notes down for your own reference, amen. When you have been, when you are strong in faith, that means you are fully persuaded. Can't nobody talk you out of this thing. It's done. It's like talking to a brick wall. My mind is made up. Yeah, I know you said you didn't make it, but that ain't got nothing to do with me. I know you said you went over there and you applied, and they said no, but that ain't got nothing to do with me. I know you, you drove over the bridge and you fell in the water and they got all in the car, but that ain't got nothing to do with I'm fully persuaded. That's how you got to get. You got to get to the point where you fully persuaded. Where you know in your know, I know that I know I know. Come on, somebody. The Bible says Abraham was fully persuaded, who considered not the deadness of his own body, neither the deadness of his wife's womb. I know she 80 years old, and I know I'm 100. But God said I can have a baby. Come on now. But see, some of us, we would consult all our friends. You know, I think Miss Jenny, she got pregnant when she was 52, but that's about it. I don't know nobody older than that had a cheer. I know what Pastor said. I know what, I know what God said, but come on now. Abraham considered not the deadness of his own body. That means stuff stopped working. Right. I ain't got to spell it out for you, dude. Right, right, right. <laughs> and the deadness of his wife's body. Right. Yeah, go. Stop working. Come on, somebody. But God gave him a child. Not because, not based on their, 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 the status of their bodies. He gave him a child based on the status of their faith. Too many times we're looking at to get too many. I'm, I'm an information guy. I love information. Sometimes we get too much information. The Bible says, "In all that get, it, get it what?" So you're supposed to, to a certain degree, get all the information you need, get all the degrees that you can stand, get all the education that your head can hold. But he said, "Lean not to your own understanding. Once you get it, it's just information. Right? It don't have an outcome on anything." It doesn't mean you're going to be anything. I still got to believe God. Amen. I still got to trust what the Lord said. Amen. Amen. And then number five, great faith. Number four, great faith. Amen. I apologize for that. <laughs> great faith, Matthew 8, 10, and Luke 7 and 9. All right? These are the two people that Jesus said had great faith. Both of these were not Jews. One was a centurion soldier, and the second one was a Seraphonician woman. The centurion soldier, uh, 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 he wanted Jesus, Jesus to come and heal his, his servant, uh, uh, and Jesus was on his way to his house, but the man said, you don't need to come, just speak the word only. He says, I'm a man in authority. I say to one, go, and he go, and I say to another, come, and he coming. He said, now, I know you're greater than that, so just speak the word. So Jesus spoke the word, and his servant became healed. And Jesus said, I have not found so great faith in all Israel. He wasn't even a Jew. He wasn't even in church, but he had faith. And then the Syrophoenician woman, she, was, she came to Jesus, amen, and she wanted him to heal her daughter. Yes, sir. So my daughter's sick. And Jesus, what did he talk to the woman? Mm -hmm. That's the hate. That's the truth. See, many of us got offended right there. Uh -huh. I come, you should be glad I come to your old church. <laughs> you better go on. I walk up in here, you don't say nothing. I ain't never coming back. You will miss your lesson. Right. Hey Amen. Jesus didn't even speak to the woman. Then when he spoke to her, he called her dog. It's not me for me to give her children's bread to dogs. Did he just call that woman a dog? And she said, Yay, Lord. But the dogs eat the crumbs yes, sir. Yes, sir. that fall from the master's table. What she was saying is, Lord, I know your blessings are so rich that your children can't eat all that stuff. And I know you got a little crumb for little old me. And all I, that stuff is so potent, all I need is a little crumb. She got that crumb and got her daughter healed. See, many of us, amen, there you go to, the, to your perseverance again. 
Hey man, he, he, I don't care what he called me. My baby need to be healed. Right. Call me a dog, just heal the baby. Call me a Negro, just heal the baby. Too many of us get offended over the N word. They ain't talking about you. Call you again. Is that on your birth certificate? You in, you gone. You done left hundred thousand dollars. You run. Not what you gonna eat. You done left homeless. <laughs> Cause somebody called you an in. No, what you gotta do is take the system and use it against them. Yes. I go right down to HR. Right. All right? Pull up my laptop and articulate what he actually called me. No, that's right. Put it in print. Triple copies. Certified mail. And be waiting on to hear from HR. What y'all gonna do about this? What you gonna do? I don't talk like that, but they do. Do you hire them kind of employees? I wanna know. Come on, somebody. That's right. All right, faith development. But without faith, Hebrews 11 6, it is what? Impossible. So you can't get around this. You cannot get around developing your faith. Without faith, it is impossible. I don't care what you do. You can usher till your feet, we wag your shoes out and your feet too. You can play the piano till your fingers are blood. You can pray like Paul, but if you ain't doing it in faith, you're not pleasing God. Faith is so important after salvation. You don't really need to hear another message about salvation because you're saved. Right. You need to develop your faith. The Bible says, 1 John 5 and 4, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the what? The world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Amen. The victories that you will experience will be in direct correlation to the development of your faith. Not your education, but your faith. Can you believe God? Can you trust God? Not how much money you got, but can you trust the Lord? That's how I'm going to get my victory. When the devil shows up on Monday morning and says he's going to take this, he's going to take that, then we're going to see what I know about God. We're going to see how much I trust the Lord. They talking about taking stuff, we're going to see how much I trust the Lord. Come on, you hear what I'm saying? It's the development of, this is how I get to victory. I overcome the world. The world has some challenges in it. The world has some obstacles in it. The world is trying to kill you. Right. Amen. And, but the way you defend yourself against the world is by your faith. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. By your faith. I got to develop my faith. I got to work on my faith all the time. I got to believe God. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm moved by what I believe. I'm going to believe God. Is this helping anybody? Yes. Doctor called you and said, I think I see something. You got a choice now. You can say the same thing as the doctor say, or you can believe God. Whose report are you going to believe? Come on, somebody. Hey, man. I remember, I thank God for my wife. Hey, man. I was, we were catching a bus somewhere. You hear what I'm saying? Could drive. We catch in the bus. What, what drives on that? What's that on our 19th Avenue? Is that the 28? We on the 28, praise the Lord. We, I'm at the bus stop. I mean, my head is hung between my shoulders. I feel like an absolute failure. I couldn't, I couldn't support my family. My head is hung low. This woman came to me and said, God didn't say you have to have a degree for him to bless you. I don't know about you, but that, that, that got me out of a slump right there. All right. I mean, my head was hung lower than my shoulder, and, and I heard what she said. It wasn't her speaking, that was God. Amen. I said, you know what, that is right. I don't see no scripture saying I got to have a degree. Man, I got up off that bench and got to work, praise the Lord. Whatever the world says you gotta have, you ain't got to have it. But what you do gotta have is some faith. The world will say you got to have good credit. 
No, you don't. You just got to have some faith. All right. The word will say you need all these qualifications. Okay. But you still got to have some faith. I know too many people got jobs. They ain't got nothing. You're looking at one of them. Amen. I'm, I'm working on my master's, but the job I got right now, they, that's what was on the job description. I say, okay, God, you say I had to have a degree. Submitted my application, went down there and talked like I had a PhD. That's right, I can do this for you. Hire me to be the best thing you ever done. Oh, yes. I can do it. I can do all those things to Christ. God. Oh my God. And I let the greater one on the inside come out. He just wants to show what he can do through you. Stop discounting yourself. I, I dare you to believe God. When the last time you applied for stuff that you ain't qualified for? Pastor, I, I ain't got all that. Let them people tell you no. You be amazed. You'd be amazed what doors open up for you. I'm talking about some of you won't even apply. Come on, somebody. All right. About time. About, okay. All right. Listen, all the promises are received by faith. Salvation, you got saved by faith. The authority of the believer, you have authority in your life and it came by faith. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is at work in your life by faith. You can't get the Holy Ghost without faith. You've got to have faith, amen. It's for the believer today, but many people don't believe it. You've got to have faith. All of the promises have come by faith. Uh, and then prayer works by faith. Divine healing comes by faith. Whole life prosperity comes by faith. Effective prayer, peace and protection. In order to lay your head on the bed and go to sleep at night, you need to have some faith, amen. Hey man, uh, uh, a couple weeks ago I'm in a burning building. It's, it's on fire, praise the Lord. Hey man, the, the alarm system broke. Hey man, I don't, there are some people in the. What's that? You, you got to do my spell check, okay? Yeah, that's definitely. I saw it. <laughs> don't mess me up, praise the Lord. All right. So look, I'm in this burning building, hey amen, and I had to run up, hey amen, eight flights of stairs to get to, to try to put this fire out. When I get there, there's somebody in. Praise God. Let me move to another slide. Okay. Yeah. There's somebody in this room, and they in that. Um, what you gonna do now? Room on fire. Blood everywhere. Okay, what am I gonna do now? Snatch them out. That's what we did. In Jesus' name, come on up out of here. We got to go. It's hot in this room. Amen. Okay, we're going to read this one. We're going to go. This is the last scripture. Hallelujah. Yeah. Genesis 15. I want to show you this because everybody think because the prosperity message has a bad rap. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? All the preachers want is your money. That's not true. That's not true. And, and even if that is so with some people, I'm not going to start teaching it because it's in the Bible. The Bible says, let the gospel be preached unto the... All right. To the poor. Here we go. Genesis 1, verse 15. After these days, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. Abraham said, Lord God, whereby shall I give thee, seeing that I go childless? And the steward in my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. What is Abraham asking about? Lord, what you gonna give me? Lord, what you gonna give me? Lord, how you gonna bless me? Abraham said, Behold, to, to me thou hast given me no seed, and lo, the one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, 
This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thine heir. Verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward the heaven. Tell the stars, if thou be able to number them, he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it for righteousness. Now, how did he get credit for righteousness? Come on, help the class. By believing. When you believe God, God gives you credit for being in right standing. When you believe God, God, he, he approved, he, he reconciles you as being in right standing with him. When I believe God, he gives me righteousness. And by giving me righteousness, now I have full access to the promises of God. Because he believed the Lord. Now God, God, he, he's just. So if he, if he does for one in principle, he got to do for me in principle. If Abraham believed God and got righteousness, then I can believe God and get righteousness. Verse 7 says, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee forth the out of earth, out of Chaldees, to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said unto him, he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? He said, Lord, how am I know you're going to give me all this stuff? He said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took them unto all, and divided them into the midst, and laid them each one piece against another. But the birds he divided not. And when the fowls of the air came down upon the carcass, Abraham drove them away. See, now God asked him for an offering, and Abraham gave him an offering, but then Abraham had to protect his offering. Here, this, is, this is the point I'm trying to get to. When you, when you believe God, you're going to have to fight against the devil trying to steal that seed in your heart. If God said he's going to bless you with a house, then, amen, every time you get some news that look contrary to what God says you can have, you're going to have to fight that thing off. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Well, the interest rate don't I'm still going to get my house. Amen. It ain't got nothing to do with what God said. Hey Amen. Well, I got laid off. That ain't got nothing to do with God. Sometimes God will let things get worse before they get better just to see where your head is at. You hear what I'm saying? That ain't got nothing to do with the power of God. He will let it get worse and see if you have the ability to trust him. Can you believe God? The Bible says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. So let's settle that right now. Do I have any believers in the house? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hold on now. That means all things are possible to you. Amen. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. All things are possible because I'm a believer. Ain't nothing too hard for God. Nothing is impossible for God. I didn't say me now. I'm saying for God. Greater is he that is in than he that is in the world. Come on, stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank Come on, give God some praise. Oh, hallelujah. Did this help anybody? Amen. The God kind of faith. You won't have to trust God. Not trust TV. Not trust the politicians. I love President Obama, but amen, my confidence is not in a black president. My confidence is in the one Christ Jesus. It's in that Bible, praise God. He said heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot or tittle will pass away from that word. Hey man, come on, Pastor. Oh, praise the Lord. Somebody need to be saved. You heard the word. The Bible says, "Man, come by hearing, hearing by the word of God." I promise you today, I'll get saved. Amen. Romans ten nine. He said, "If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved." Does anybody need to be saved today? Just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Forgive me today of all my faults and my ways. Lord Jesus, come inside my heart. I make you Lord and Savior 
Yeah. <laughs> 